morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We are so excited to have you today. My name is Susan Moore. I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at IIBA, and today we have got a panel of guests, and we're going to be talking with you about navigating the business analysis job market in 2023, and I am going to have them introduce themselves in just a moment, but let me do some quick housekeeping to get us started. First, we love it when you chat with us and with each other, so keep doing that. Um, let us know. Where are you from? Say hello. Um, if you've got questions, we are going to leave time for questions at the end, and if you will put those into the Q&A box, we will get to those, and we have reactions turned on. So if you hear something and you want to thumbs up or clap, use those reactions. Our speakers can see those, so that is, um, that's a great way to let them know that you are feeling the same way. Okie doke. Uh, one last thing, we are recording today's session and you will get a link to the recording and I think we've got some slides that we'll be sharing with you as well. Just as kind of some follow up in case you, uh, you want to look back over those. That will come out 24 hours after today's um, webinar. So with that, I have said my piece. I, again, I'm Susan Moore. I'm the Community Engagement Manager. Stephen, introduce yourself. Hey everyone, Steven Meyer. Um, I've been with Apex Systems almost 15 years now, 10 years as a senior PMO recruiter supporting our uh, Midwest market. So very engaged with you all as candidates, helping you in your job search. And then the last five years as a delivery engineer, which basically that means I work more with our clients and the hiring managers to understand what they need and to connect the dots between the candidate experience and the hiring experience. So uh, I can see both of it or see from both angles with my experience over the last 15 or so years at Apex. So happy to be here. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. You you give us the um, what are what are the employers thinking perspective. Maria, you are the next person that I can see. I just realized I was on mute. I better unmute myself. <laughs> Did not want too much noise? Um, hi, my name is obviously Maria Montgomery, all the way from Australia, Melbourne. I am a career coach and also mentor um, individuals and organizations in thriving in their personal settings and also in their um, work settings. I am also have been in a BA world, um, don't want to show too much of my age, but for over 20 years, very passionate in business analysis field, and I currently hold a role as technology engagement manager at Unisuper. So what I can add value hopefully today is from a career uh, coaching perspective, but also from my career progression within business analysis world. Thank you, Maria. And also, if you're from Australia, we'll get a little bit of what's going on in Australia in that job market. So thank you for joining us. Tiffany, you're next. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Susan. My name is Tiffany Iacolino. I am the Senior Manager of Product Marketing here at IIBA. I work on marketing new products, um, new publications, supporting our certifications. And um, today I'm going to be talking about um, a new publication um, that has come out in the GSBA report, the Global State of Business Analysis, as we kind of dive into talking about how that applies to navigating in your um, your job uh, search and in your journey there. So that's a little bit about me and that's it. I'll pass it back to you, Susan. Thank you. We're so excited to have you. And yeah, that GSBA is such a vital resource if you're getting your job search started. And then we've got two other folks. So we've got um, Jenny Lee, who's on and then we've also got um, IIBA webinar. Those are, um, that's SEMA. And so they're, they're helping us to manage the backstage kind of stuff. So that's, um, that's what they're doing. Well, let's get started. Um, so, you know, whether you're looking to get started in business analysis or you're changing careers or you have been impacted by changes in your organization, today's market for business analysis professionals is really hot. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to explore different ways that you can get ready for that job search. So on that note, 
Um, let's start by looking at some of the trends that we're seeing in business analysis. And Tiffany, you mentioned that the GSBA, what we call the Global State of Business Analysis Survey, has just come out. So why don't you give us some highlights from that that pertain to, um, to job search? For sure, for sure. Um, so for those that aren't familiar with the report, I'm just going to give you a couple of um, uh, key points of just kind of what it is and what it covers. So it's our sixth year in um, in uh, publishing the report. It uh, shares just crucial highlights and insights that's impacting the future of, uh, of the profession. And it basically takes a look at career development, demographics, education, and uh, as you said, trends. And that's kind of here what we're talk what we're here to talk about today. So um, it's a, it's a really comprehensive um, resource that we make uh, available to to our members. The uh, demographics um, includes um, uh, a survey of over 4,000 uh, respondents. So 4,242 professionals participate and represent over 165 countries. So we do get kind of a pulse of those trends um, from, from around, around the globe. So let's just dive into a couple of the trends um, that, uh, that I wanna share with you guys today. Um, so moving right, right, uh, right ahead, um, we're gonna talk about what we saw in the survey for those that are looking for a new job. Um, you know, career, ch uh, career change or, or moving their, their roles. Um, where, where do people sit with that? Um, there's been a lot of change, um, you know, through the pandemic and, and just with uh, inflation and things like that. So we posed the question, are you considering a new job? And our um, respondents came back with 42 percent um, uh, professionals are considering a new job. So that's a pretty high number. And we we then look into, OK, well, what is what's driving that? Like, let's 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 dive into why. What's kind of motivating um, professionals to be looking for um, for a new position, a new role? And here we've broken down um, our, our motivating factors. So we see salary is uh, a big driver and our number one driver at at twenty six percent. Some professionals are just generally looking for more engaging, interesting work. Um, if there's one thing that we learned just you know living through uh, a pandemic or just depending on on your your work life situation work life balance is, is an important factor at 18 percent um, workplace culture is something that is is coming in important promotion and then rounding down to diversity and inclusion so those are some of the reasons that people are are looking for for new roles and, and tapping into resources to to kind of move through um, what's next for them career wise. So another um, data point, another question that we that we asked. So they're looking you're looking for a new job. Well, what are you interested in? What are what are the, the top areas of interest? Business analysis is very diverse. Um, it's constantly evolving as we move into um, more, um, I don't want to say niche, but more specialized areas. Um, so um, in the this year's report, um, the top three areas um, that um, came to light was uh, the first one was product management. Um, the second one was product ownership. And the third one is um, data analytics. Um, so those are... Um, not um, not surprising because we do see some correlation here um, with the areas of responsibility that were reported, which I'll share on another slide. So um, I will dive into those a little bit more. Um, moving ahead, um, another question um, that um, came through on the survey was um, the top five reported benefits of certification. And we found in, um, in doing the survey work and producing this report year after year, there's obviously a very tight connection between um, your um, career progression and and you know um, certification and, and professional development and the the re the top 
benefits that we saw in this year's report um, that professionals were gaining from certification included higher confidence at work, um, just generally, um, you know, um, hitting their upskilling, um, you know, goal, um, helping them find a new job, which is what we're here to talk about, um, you know, in, in general today, or helping support people through that. Uh, salary increase is, is a big benefit, and then just greater fulfillment at work. And um, those themes are, are consistent with previous years. Um, they have shifted a little bit, um, but but overall, those are are you know the some of the key benefits that that we're seeing um, in that. And then um, tied to the, tied to that, um, you know, there is a um, a finding that came out of the survey that says how does certification change your career? Well, there's many ways that it changes your career, but in this particular um, piece of information that we're sharing here is that we found um, professionals who hold um, at least one certification earn 15% more than non-certified respondents. Um, and the interesting finding here is that that stat is up um, from 12% in our last year survey. So um, we definitely see that there is um, uh, positive, some positive um, um, trends to be tied to um, certification in, in your career. So um, I'm going to just uh, quickly go through some of the employment trends that we came across here. And um, the first one we're going to look at is just simply, you know, are we working more? Um, what does that look like? We, we take a look at those um, employment trends. And um, the answer is, uh, you know, yes and no, depending on um, how many hours you um, you tend to work um, in these buckets. So, um, you know, for the 36 to 40 hours there this year, we see a 3% increase at 54%. Um, in um, the over 40 hours is down, which I think is a, a, a good way for that trend to be moving um, in the, I guess, which should be more like, you know, part-time hours of 20 to 35, that's up a little bit, and then less than 20, um, you know, very minor um, change than, than previous years. And then moving ahead, I'm just going to jump over to skills. And um, the report does break this down in much more detail, but I'm just sharing the top 10 skills um, that, um, that, that, um, was uh, reported um, and just running through them, um, you know, communication, problem solving, business knowledge, facilitation, agile mindset, decision making, creative thinking, system thinking, leadership, and conceptual thinking. And I will give a small shout out to Susan, because I know that on our business analysis live, we do a deeper dive um, into some of these skills. So anyone interested can check out, um, can check that out, um, where we talk about the skills a bit more. Um, and then this is the just moving ahead to the areas of responsibilities. So this is where I said I would uh, uh, dive in a little bit more to that correlation of the top three areas of interest of moving in. When you look at the responsibilities here, um, within the top you know, six areas of responsibilities, you're seeing product ownership, you're seeing pro uh, project management, you're seeing, seeing um, data analysis, obviously business analysis in general and process development round out the top, but you are seeing that just some of the areas of responsibility are shifting that way. So that, that kind of, you know, um, um, plays into why that um, some of those um, areas of interest were kind of um, highlighted in, in the survey. And then just some other um, interesting um, pieces just in, re in regards to employment trends are um, that we saw, you know, the job levels. Um, what does that look like, you know, um, in terms of um, from, you know, experienced, you know, management um, in the executive, are things changing in, in, that, in that direction? So our biggest area here is the experienced senior level um, professional. Um, which is interesting. And again, in the report, you'll be able to, to dive uh, deeper in, into um, what, what, um, how that, that plays out. And um, my um, final um, um, 
piece of um, information that I'll share in, in regards to the, the trends we're seeing is the top industries um, that employ business analysis professionals, which is, um, is, a, is an interesting one um, for those that are embarking on, on you know, looking for, um, you know, either getting into the industry or just navigating in their journey. Um, so uh, we've got banking, finance and insurance, um, information technology, consulting and professional services, government, and then of course, healthcare and pharmaceutical. So those are just some of the insights that you can you can kind of um, get from the report. And, um, and yeah, I'll, I'll pass it back to you, Susan. I didn't know if there was anything else I could go over. I, I think this is a really good start. And I think as a reminder, if you are an IIBA member, you have access to the report now that that launched the full report launched last month. It did, yes. Right in the beginning of last month, um, it's a member benefit. If you visit our website today, you'll see it on our homepage, but um, for easy access, iaba.org slash GSBA, and um, you'll be able to uh, get the latest report um, and, and kind of dive into all 50 pages of it. And, <laughs> and so if see. data is your thing, the GSBA is for you. And, you know, I, I often talk with our members about, you know, use business analysis on your, your own career planning. And so if we want to assess the current state, one of the ways that we can do that is through using the results of the GSBA report. So I think that is a good a good first step. But now let's talk about some other ways that you can understand the current state. And so, Stephen, this I'm going to start this question with you. You're here. You're representing the U.S. today. Um, Tell us a little bit about from the recruiter perspective, what are you seeing employers look for in first in their hiring and in business analysis professional uh, positions specifically? Sure. Thanks, Susan. And it was just so interesting hearing Tiffany's points because so many things that I wrote down from my vantage point, I was like, oh, check, check. Yes, that's correct. But but I'll start with this. One of the biggest things that I think employers are looking for right now that continues to grow is not a skill set related, it's location related. There is a big increase in hybrid and on site work requirements across all industries right now. So, just to keep that in mind, there's still a huge, huge candidate pool out there that only wants to work 100% remote. But if you do have the flexibility to consider being on site one day a week, two days a week, and you pursue those what I would call hybrid jobs, Keep that in mind, you're probably going to have a smaller pool of competition for those openings because there are a lot of people in your local markets that still won't do anything but 100% remote. So that's one of the big things that I'm seeing. Um, I'm also seeing, as Tiffany had mentioned, just an increase in Agile in general, more exposure to Agile, working with Agile teams. Big thing I'm seeing for business analysts, do you have Agile tracking tools experience? Have you worked with JIRA? Have you worked with Azure DevOps, Rally, any of those big ones out there? Confluence is another one that you see that's kind of connected to JIRA. But having that agile tracking tool experience is important because so many project teams anymore are using those tools day in and day out. Um, kind of going down that same path with agile, just the ability for a business analyst to work in user stories as opposed to use cases. That's important now. There's still a lot of need for being able to do use cases and, and really drilling into that, but also being able to write those shorter user stories is very important, depending on the setup of the company that you're interviewing for. So keep that in mind. Um, another piece that kind of goes off the Agile piece is just the ability to work with product owners. Um, a lot of organizations still have separate BAs from product owners. Some of them are kind of merging the roles together. It just really depends. But being able to collaborate and work with a product owner to do things like defining acceptance criteria is very important for a lot of roles right now out there. And then one other area that Tiffany hit on that I think is so true and I see it every day is every employer wants to see a business analyst with some small tangible technical skill. So it could be in data, it could be in analytics, it could be something like basic SQL knowledge. Do you know how to write SQL queries? Or it could be exposure to a data visualization tool like Tableau or Power BI. 
But having that little bit of exposure to data and analytics really does go a long way um, when you're looking for jobs right now, because you just don't see many BA jobs out there anymore that don't have some data component. I hope that was a good high level overview for you, Susan. Yeah, that I, that is a really good high. And, and I think it answers a lot of questions that I know that we get um, from our members who are seeking jobs about both the hard skills and the soft skills that they need to have ready or that where they need improvement. So that represents the U.S. Now, Maria, you're in Australia. What's the, what's the job market like? And are you what are you seeing from um, from candidates? Um, definitely following on on Stephen's um, point, um, in Australia, shall I call it more, our market is hot, particularly for BAs. There's a huge demand in, in that BA space. And I found an interesting fact, um, there was a survey done by a uh, government in Australia um, on the ads on, uh, in October 2022. And one of the top 10 IT, you know, IT industry jobs that were advertised, one of them was BA along the size with network and, and kind of project management side. So it's definitely hot. What I find, um, if I put my lens as a resource manager, uh, looking for BAs, um, it's very hard to um, keep them employed. Um, we have lots of interesting projects going on, particularly in a finance sector, in a superannuation uh, sector where I'm currently in. And uh, we, we're having a lot of mergers. The, the, the smaller companies are merging into bigger companies. And there's a lot of projects going in that space. There's also a lot going on in terms of the technology. We're doing a lot of uplift in cloud Azure environments as well, so that we kind of um, do, do look for BAs in a bit of technical space as well. Um, what I'm seeing also, which is quite interesting, and obviously being in, in, in um, I started BA career as a, as a junior a very long time ago, and, and, and the, the whole role has evolved, is that we're starting to see a value of BA, uh, BA roles in other sectors such as crown like gambling um, health health insurance um, not just health insurance but also health um, hospitals they were doing uplifting of their technologies universities as well so it's quite a broad and government as well so it's quite a broad um, uh, sector that, that we're seeing so and it's good to see it's good to see that we're having you know BA role being valued in different areas so upskilling is very important um, to, to Stephen's point and making sure that you, you're skillful and have knowledge in, in, in those different areas as well. I, I, yeah, I think that's important. Some of those, some of those upskilling opportunities could be the differentiator um, for where you might want to move next. Um, and also, I love that you brought up the importance of business analysis and some of what are higher risk um, industries. So I want to give a shout out just because I know that some of our Canadian provinces have a, a liquor and a liquor and lottery, yeah, yeah. and we have business analysis professionals working in yeah. those. And I always say that sounds like a really fun place to work, but they say, no, 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 there's a lot of legislation and a lot of regulation. And in those kinds of, um, you know, if you are somebody that really is interested in rules and regulations and things like that, government positions and things like that can be really great opportunities. So a great reminder of where business analysis can be found, Maria. Exactly. And you just kind of alerted me to something else that I, I do help um, done a bit of consulting in um, that smaller, smaller businesses sector as well that entrepreneurial is also looking for business um, analysis space and I've done a bit of work in that that government um, re regulator sector um, where you know they're looking um, regulations around import of dairy products and um, it was AI so that's another industry that is very um, kicking off as well artificial intelligence oh yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah especially with Chat GPT and boy, that's brought up yeah. a whole a whole other a whole other set of skills that uh, business analysis professionals can be bringing and to the table. Exactly, and I just you know you got just got to learn learn it yourself. You know, you're constantly learning. That's right. Yep, that's right. 
So I think so. This gives us both the U.S. and in the um, Australian uh, marketplaces. I think that gives us a good idea of kind of what's what's going on with business analysis. So now let's think to the future state. So if I'm if I'm thinking about a, a job opportunity for myself, well, the next thing I want to do if I'm applying business analysis to it is I want to think about what that future state might look like. And on that note. Um, how can job seekers prepare themselves for this job search? So, Stephen, tell us some of the ways that um, that Apex Systems helps their their clients work sure. through that. Sure, and and you don't have to write this down or memorize this. Uh, this link will be sent out for the job search navigation map. But this kind of shows the way our company looks at searching for a job from start to finish. I'm not going to talk about every one of these. I'm actually just going to really focus on. Point number one, self-assessment and self-reflection. And I'm just really going to cover the self-reflection piece. And, and I think that's where so many people forget to start their job search is the self-reflection piece and why they keep having to do their job search over and over again every three months, every six months, because they end up just throwing it all out there and trying to find something. And then they get into a job and they realize they don't like it. And so they're back to square one again in two or three months saying, this isn't the place for me. Let me go back and start my job search over. So taking that little bit of time on self-reflection is so important. And it can be things like this. I'll give you ideas what to reflect on. Um, like what tasks do you enjoy doing as a business analyst? Or do you want to do as a business analyst? Maybe it's what we talked about earlier, doing more agile work, writing user stories. Maybe it's more in the data and analytics space. Maybe it's working with robotic process automation. RPA is big right now. I don't know, but maybe you can have a list of the tasks you want to do. Also think about what types of projects you enjoy being on. Maybe it's web development work. Maybe it's product development work. Maybe it's infrastructure, cybersecurity. I don't know. I, I can't decide that for you. You have to be able to say, hey, these are the types of projects I think I'd really enjoy getting ingrained in and kind of sinking my teeth into. Um, also, industry. Reflect on what industry. We've got some people who know, hey, I'm never going to work in healthcare. I'm never going to work in financial services, or I'm never going to work in the environment Susan was talking about that's heavily regulated and lots of government regulations they've got to deal with in red tape. Well, that's to each their own. So think about what industry. So tasks that you like to do, types of projects, and then what industries. And if you start kind of reflecting on those areas, it's really going to help you build out, okay, now where should I take my job search next? Um, also reflect on where your skills are at this time. And it's something could be as easy as like a SWOT analysis. Where are your strengths right now? If you were to step into a job today, where do you know you could hit it out of the park? Where do you know you can make sure that you're going to bring your strength from day one? And then also reflect on where your weaknesses are. What do you need to shore up? Well, what do you need to make sure you start working on because you know it's a shortcoming right now? And that kind of builds into the opportunities. Okay, you, you've identified your weaknesses for your skills. Now here's the opportunity to, to shore those up. Maybe it's something like joining a meetup group, joining your local IIBA chapter, becoming an IIBA member and getting access to a lot of their um, trainings and, and online material in their library. Um, there's so many things. Maybe it's getting a career coach, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So there's a lot of opportunities to make sure you take those weaknesses and turn them into strengths. Um, the other area that doesn't get talked about enough for self-reflection, in my opinion, and it's very true to the BA field because BA should be good at a few things, written and verbal communication. You're communicating with different stakeholders all the time, but you need to reflect then on what are you putting out there about yourself, your resume and your LinkedIn profile, to name two right off the top of my head. Does that capture who you are and where you want to go? So reflect on that. If I look at my LinkedIn profile right now and I pull it up, does that really capture who I am and maybe where I want to go with my career? Same with my resume. Does that really capture who I am and where I want to go? So self-reflection doesn't need to take a week. It doesn't even need to take a day. But if you could spend an hour or two on it, I really think it will improve your job search from start to finish. I, I was reading an article today on 
it's it's one of those new labor terms, rage applying. I don't know if any of you have heard mm. that. It's what you do when you're so frustrated or underwhelmed or whatever in your workplace that you just start sending out resumes. And that is exactly the kind of thing that, that you're talking about that you should not do because you'll find yourself in that job loop over and over again because you haven't given yourself an opportunity to really reflect. So it's really important um, to think about that. So Maria, um, you're, I know, is part of the coaching that you do, you often work with business analysis professionals on doing self-assessments. Tell us a little bit about that, um, about how self-assessment tools can be used to help you with your job search. I find them um, very, um, very useful and very important, actually, particularly I, I always start off with with my clients when we're working through the career assessment um, with um, some goals. And I find that the one that we got on IBA that you currently have on the screen, very useful in, in your initial assessment to see where you're at. It also um, helps you on a journey of discovering what are the areas that you specifically need to focus on and, and gain knowledge in, whether it's, um, you know, from your coaching, training, the, uh, you know, getting certification as well. So find the IIBA um, a, as a baseline, a very useful tool, um, which... I have um, also um, embedded into my coaching um, uh, and tailored it to, to specifically, you know, make it workable in, in certain environments for certain clients as well on their journey of, of becoming strong BAs. We, we do, we've, uh, I use um, terminology, I'm not sure in, in America world, but we use um, terminology aspiring BAs, the ones that are kind of going, wanted to, or going on a journey from that kind of limited knowledge to also strong BAs is another word that we're using um, as you scale up to getting more to the senior strategic and you know we, we, we even starting to talk about executive executive BAs so um, on the next slide um, as, as, as we've gone through there are different levels that you can try and rate yourself after you do the assessment and and from there on we, we look at the goals another another tool that I found quite useful and uh, my very good friend Michael Angelo who's a advisor at IIBA has um, has put together is around prioritizing your competences using the actual quadroom where you can look at a different areas to prioritize personally for yourself on the skills that you would like to de develop like for example if it's development around your stakeholder um, uh, comms if you for example a pm that might be more critical for your role so it's also aligning it to the roles and responsibility and also expectation of that role and you might want to prioritize through 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 your um, assessment um, i also call it um, and i've got a book coming up on the art of business and um how, on how to get the business analysis right. And I talk a lot about um, audit, auditing your uh, skill sets and, and looking at from your hard to your soft skill set. And as Stephen also mentioned, for example, Agile. Agile is also big in Australia as well. All the companies' approaches going user stories. So you might want to prioritize those against those assessment and also our core competencies of um, knowledge as well. And they'll help you through, through guiding you through the next level from the knowledge to the skills to the technique because um, I will share with this group once you see the I've got this big tree our world is really big like we, we've there's so much if you look at other other roles <laughs> there's so much expectation from us so and, and even in this chat if we're looking at it's not only business knowledge it's not only now you know we need to have a technical knowledge and trying to gain that experience um, it takes time it's a journey yeah, it is. And I, I think, you know, for those of us that have been in the profession for a while, we maybe uh, don't remember all of the things that we were having to learn on the job and all of that stuff and that, that has gotten us where we are. But, um, you know, I think that's um, I think that's an important part. I, I think sometimes that where business analysis professionals, when they're looking for that job, they they maybe don't um, they maybe discredit some of the other experiences that they've had and they they um, they really don't oh gosh they they okay. don't do themselves service really um, uh, and maybe shortchange themselves in some of the uh, ways that if they did some asset you know that they looked at an assessment 
um, and really honed in on specifically what skills do I have that I can feel confident about and where do I need to do some additional training or certification or whatever in order to really get myself ready for this next career. Okay, so that's Susan's two cents. Alrighty, so let's let's keep moving because I think this is an, a really important point. Um, so now, and again, I'm using business analysis, right, to, to look for this job search. So we've talked about the current state. We've, we've dreamed a little bit. We've thought about a, what a future state might look like. And now we're starting to fill in these gaps. Um, Maria, talk a little bit about how you can use these assessments um, to guide your job search, whether it's career paths that we, we might be thinking about or how we can you know, look at job descriptions in the way that really gets us the kind of opportunity that we're looking for. Awesome. Yeah. And um, from my experience, um, there are different pathways that you can you can look at and, and I work through it with my clients, but it's also my journey through through business analysis world. Um, there are two aspects to it that you can have a look at. We, we discuss a lot around business analysis. So if you're purely looking at that business analysis on the left-hand side, um, you can potentially start off a core inspiring, but business analyst from your junior, working your way all the way up to a management level where you may decide to stay in, in, in a business formal business analysis and ensure you get your certifications through either IIBRC, BAB, entry level, um, Agile. Obviously, Agile is, is, is a big thing. And, and, and you might want to, I guess, um, get to the management level and manage the business, setting up business practices, um, business analysis community or practices. The other avenue that business analysis side offers um, is business architecture. They're becoming quite quite another space, um, very important in, in a lot of organisations, um, in particular uh, new organisations as well as um, uh, organisations that are going through the mergers. Um, they work a lot in a strategy space, so they're looking at a lot of strategic, strategical goals, values, why. Where are we heading as an organization? Business analysts can get um, add great value in a business architecture space. So if you're looking in that space, you could be looking at as a business architect and also becoming a manager of business architecture. Um, you, you probably might want to consider uh, Six Sigma is, is one of the big things and, and kind of looking at because you're looking at the high level cap you know, organizational capability. But I think it lines really well when you get to that strategic level of business analysis. I've put in, in, between, uh, in between the two career parts is the agile, uh, agile um, companies. You, you could look into getting into different roles in that aspect and different roles, um, as mentioned, Steve mentioned before, is you're from product owners, product managers. I've, I've seen a lot of BAs and... Um, I don't know, the, a lot of BAs that I work with, even personally myself, um, I love the attention to, to detail. BAs actually like doing the BA work, so they might not necessarily want to work on the management side or even, you know, PM world. Um, they tend to become product owners and product managers because they get into the detail, particularly in the agile, agile space, that they have that knowledge and they enjoy doing that. You might want to consider scrum mastering and um, iteration management. The, depending on what methodology you're using. There's Scrum, you know, there's your typical Agile. And we do have some organisation um, that provide uh, that are quite well recognised um, in Australia that I've got listed there, like Elaborate Aid or Excel. They provide those certifications. But also SAFE um, is, is quite popular in Australia from, from an Agile methodology and peer methodology perspective. Um, then you might want to consider technical. So we do have a lot of technical analysts that, that come through the rings of things. And some of them do go in both spaces. They, 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 they decide that they want to take on more that business analysis um, role, or they might decide to take in a technical space. Now, technical analysis, we talked a little bit about technical knowledge, has become also um in demand in Australia, uh, particularly in the projects that I looked at at Unisuper. And, and, and that's really more of that technical domain around Azure, cloud that, we, that we're seeing. 
purely because we we implementing a lot of out of the box tools and then and, and even in a network space and um, in that space you do need to have that technical knowledge because those projects do tend to be sometimes quite short that you need to quickly go in and and and, and um, put technical analysis data management interface management done and in that space you could potentially consider getting into solution architecture. I've seen a lot of technical analysts not wanted to um, be at the front in that business analysis. And, and I'm more talking about the stakeholder management a facilitation um, that is very like well, some of those core skill sets at, at, at the front that they actually prefer technology side of things and, and dealing with technology. And you might want to have a solution architecture path where you and and then you you will need TOGAF and 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 those certification if you decide to go down that path. I've got a very good friend of mine that that's actually just recently got certified and decided to take solution architecture side. The other side that are other parts, um, and this is my unusual part I have taken, um, is gone into relationship partners uh, roles. Um, they have really become particular in superannuation and, and finance sector. We call them a technical um, relationship partner, like managers. And their role is really what we're finding still in, in, in some areas that we lack in that communication at the higher level between the IT and, and our business. So with having those really good analytical skill sets, project management and communication skill sets, this role has have become quite popular with business analysis. I, mu I must admit, I personally enjoy it myself as well. And you do tend to work at the strategic level. So you're just building those relationships. And other ones are product owners or even product managers, as I mentioned before, that they're so many different pathways and just as a, to conclude um, when I think about this I, I'll come back to my tree that I have it's because we do tend to gain knowledge and our companies is so broad that we could actually slip into these roles and we can make a choice ourselves which career path we undertake and that, that involves a lot of learning developing and being hands-on and, and building your career in a way that you want to, what you enjoy. I think I'm personally, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I believe that if, you, if you're passionate about specific skills, specific pathway that you want to undertake, you'll build your career around that. And I'll stop talking because I'm talking too much. Is that? <laughs> no, I, I get very I, passionate. Well, and I think that you've, I think that you've highlighted because, uh, because the business analysis skill set really is so fundamental to so many kinds of jobs that really, if you've got a good uh, foundation in that, you really can go wherever your heart uh, or technical skills take you. And I think to Stephen's earlier point, that's why that moment of self-reflection is really going to serve you well because you can do anything, but if you want a job where you think you're going to be valuable and motivated, take a bit to, to think about really where do you want to um, to spend your time doing work? I mean, really making it meaningful. Stephen, you know, when I think about all of the possible job titles, all of the possible industries, all of the possible everything that we could be talking about in a job search like this, um, I, I think about, man, I need some help uh, because this, is, this could be a lot. Tell us a little bit about how, how a role like a recruiter could help in your job search? Yeah, I mean, the IT industry, some other industries out there, but the IT industry in general is one of those few industries where if you really get in good with a few recruiters and, and make sure they understand your motivators and skill set, you may never have to look for a job yourself ever in your entire career. I mean, I've placed people three times, four times, five times over the course of their career uh, depending on what their motivators were and how things changed with their career. But I would just say that the good part about working with a hopefully a local recruiter, if you can find one, I think Apex has roughly 72 offices across the United States and Canada. We don't have one in every market, uh, but or across in every city across the world. But a lot of companies do. There are a lot of different companies like an Apex Systems out there. So if you can find and, and really become ingrained with a few of them, I think that will help you out because they're going to give you honesty, hopefully about the job market. And they're going to be able, hopefully through their manager relationships, 
to maybe help sell you in on the pieces that are missing. Hey, I know you're really looking for this um, manager, but I've got another candidate I think you should strongly consider. I've been working with them for three months. They're looking for this exact job and they're willing to ramp up in these areas. So we can help sell you for those roles too while you're trying to do it yourself. That's right. And then Maria, you bring the the career coach perspective. And so the slide that we've got up right now, actually part of our new career center is the ability to connect with career coaches. Um, talk maybe just briefly about how a career coach can be helpful because it's slightly different from what a recruiter can do. Um, and then, yeah, tell us about career yeah. coaches. <laughs> I think it's really exciting um, when I've seen that we've we've launched this on IIBA and and the difference um, when you're looking for career coaching, it's really somebody that can um, guide you through the actual that doing part and and the gap that you potentially could have um, for the roles that you're, for example, looking for. It could be gaps in your skill set and career coach can actually coach you and also mentor you on, on the doing part. How, how do you prepare yourself? What, what are the, 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 the things that you need to learn? Um, you know, suggestions on, you know, even if it's a reading a book or training um, to, to actually gain those skill sets and get you ready for your next career move and and they can also drive you simple um, assessment around your passion and things that you know that the career guide um, opportunity that you might have so yeah career guide I, I believe is a great way um, to go about as your next step I know there's a lot of training but you know training will pro provide you that baseline and and um, base knowledge um, a career coach will um, take you into um, those next opportunities on and how do you get that that pathway and um, yeah I find this really exciting tool at IOVA yeah, so that's so this is available to our members. And um, at some point, we might be able to find you there, right, Maria? That's correct. I'm On trying yeah. to technically get up there now because it's quite okay. good. <laughs> um, the, the only thing I, I would mention, and I've noticed this couple questions, which I assume we'll leave it for later. I well, thought I was... you know what? We, we can start to transition into the questions if yeah. you would like, because I know there are some for you. That are in I noticed list. and I thought I was yeah. responding, but I think I wasn't responding in the right chat. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, the only other thing before we close the career coaching, I'll post if you like to get in touch with me for now on LinkedIn will be the best way. If you wanted to share, um, I've got free BA um, mindset checklist that I like to share with you and also chapter seven, which is it of my book that's going to be published next month, where, that will give you a bit of a guide around the assessment and, and things that we covered here. So I'll pop it in a chat. And for now, if you like to receive any of my stuff, please get in touch with me on LinkedIn, PM me. And if I get your details, I'll definitely um, go through that. All right. Okay, should we go back in the chat? So I've got to go back to. The yeah. Questions. So let's. Yeah. OK, so now we're going to take some questions. We've got a. We've got a little more than 10 minutes. Let's see how, how many of these we can get. So, again, if you've got a question, you can put that into the Q&A box. If you see a question in the Q&A box and you have the same question, give it an upvote. We'll take these in that priority order. So um, first question here is from Mark. And I think this is, Tiffany, I think this question is for you. Does the report have a split between contract and permanent business analyst? Do you do you focus on that at all in um, the GSBA? We have some questions that, um, that give you insights on, um, it's in our employment area, but the report itself is not split that way. So there are some questions about employment status that gives you insight about how uh, individuals are working like full-time, you know, um, contract, part-time, things like that. But the report is not split in that way per se. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So... Shannon has a question, and this one is for you, Maria. In the U.S., many employers are looking for experience with SQL and Power BI. Are you seeing BA positions in Australia focusing on specific technologies? Yes, definitely. Um, 
SQL and um, BI was trying to respond to that, but it clearly um, didn't come through the right chat, um, <laughs> is, is also areas particular um, where that relates to is data. So a lot of organizations are finding that um, they need more data and, and they don't have um, reporting. Um, so that's definitely becoming one of the areas. But the other areas that I'm seeing and particularly around as we're implementing a lot of new solutions around cloud, Azure, networking, we are are having projects where BAs particularly and, and, and I'm coming from a recruitment perspective as I was recruiting and and um, I had this view well BAs should be able to generic skill set but we did discover we did need particular knowledge and I'm talking about probably like um, Stephen for, for those BAs to be able to they've got the technical bit of a technical background they might have done a bit of programming and and so forth um, even in the testing space that they have that knowledge um, in in in, in those areas um, uh, and also data, data management, um, data, that kind of data space, special data is, is becoming also, and AI, AI is another one. And cybersecurity, sorry, I should not forget that because we did, <laughs> did have about huge leakages in Australia. I don't know if you've heard of company Optus. Oh, <laughs> I, My I data feel... was compromised as well. <laughs> oh, no, I, I feel like, uh, you know, it, here's, here's, a, here's a good job search tip. Any company that is in the news um, about something terrible that has happened here in the U.S., we had aviation companies with problems and we had some ransomware attacks they need business analysis i'm just saying um they they are probably tops on the list for needing business analysts so that's that potentially where you could be looking all righty janine has a question i'm planning to take the ccba exam in the next few months does iiba have a way to find study groups and the answer is yes i am going to pop in the chapter events calendar many of our chapters hold uh study groups um on in different time zones sometimes even in different languages so um all you need to do is just go out to the chapter event portal and do a search for study group and um, anything there you will you know you'll find it and they usually go over a series of weeks so that's a good way for you to be able to find study groups it's also a great way to network um, and to meet other professionals that are doing what you do. I've, I've popped into a, a study group or two and it's really helpful because they, they're studying together and they're also kind of sharing their study tips and things like that. So it's a great, it's a great opportunity. And those groups, I've seen a lot of chats and Q and A come through about like, what else could I be doing? I feel like I'm doing everything else. And the networking piece is where I see a lot of people are lacking you are going to hear no more than you hear yes in the job search. It's a fact of life. That's why career coaches exist. Because just think about when you played sports growing up, like you were bad until you became good because a coach helped you get better. So same with the job search. Um, and, and that's the one piece where they're, they say, oh, I think I've tweaked my resume. I'm working on this. And I'm always like, but are you involved with that community? And, and that is the piece that I feel like opens a lot of doors for you. Um, is when you really get involved with that community, whether it be a study group, whether it be going to some virtual events like this or, or attending an in-person meeting or, or trying to go to a conference in the future. But those things really do help set you apart when maybe employers or hiring managers that are also part of those communities see your resume or, or mention they have a job opening. Yeah, great, great reminder that if you're only sending out resumes you are probably going to get a lot of no's. Um, Suzanne Ricci, who um, who comes and talks on our panels every once in a while, she says your network is your net worth, and I think that is um, that is absolutely accurate. So um, so find ways that you can network with other professionals. It it really will open doors. If not immediately, um, it it can open doors in ways that maybe you didn't expect. Yep. So, and Trent just put in the chat, Trent's, I think out of St. Louis, um, the last five roles he's accepted in his career have all came through his IIBA network. I think at I, one point I was involved heavily in the Kansas City <laughs> IIBA for about 10 years, attended a lot of meetings. And at one point I saw the president ended up hiring, I think three or four BAs from that community onto her team where she was working. Yeah, that's right. I think probably the best way to interview is to is to get to know somebody um, 
and then you are the you are a person that they might think of when they've got their next job opening. So um, so great, and thanks thanks for everybody that is um, that is that is including their experiences in chat. I think that's I think gives a lot of people a lot of good tips because there's a we're giving you a lot of good information, but read the chat because you're getting a lot of good information there too. All right, so this next question it's it's anonymous, and I'm going to take it in a slightly different. Um, way here. So this person is asking, acquiring the entry level uh, BA certificate, what we call the ECBA, um, yikes, and, and getting a Tableau certificate, would that help for any industry? So let's talk about if you are maybe new to the profession. Maria, you used the term that I really liked, aspiring business analysts. Um, how might, how might a, a certification help? And I'll, I'll turn that over to you, Maria. How, how might a certification help if you're an aspiring business analyst? Or should I even invest in certifications if I'm, if I'm new? Um, it, it's an interesting question. And I've have had a few, um, few clients that I've coached through the transition. What I mean by transition, for example, there were UIT managers, you know, testing managers or coming from, it, from a different, totally different environment, want to become a BA. I think it's it those those that have and I can speak from their behalf and what I've seen um, people growing in, in a business analysis space is that provide you their foundation. So I think it was very important that they, they found that they, they've learned those um, foundational stuff that you as a business analyst need need to have. So I think it's a very good and important starting point to 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 learn um, and and to get those baselines and then start doing implementing those and um, through those certifications um, you'll learn a lot and again there are study groups around those as well that you can bounce um, those ideas what you're learning there um, combining if you decide to have coaching where you can use those terminology into the doing and applying it to your job and finding opportunities to do the analytical work in your day-to-day -day job as well and putting your hand up um, but it definitely helps with the foundations of business analysis. Yeah, that's right. And we we talked about how important having a good foundation is so that you can go in, in any direction. Something like an ECBA can help you to do that. Okay, so the next question here, and it's actually referencing um, a, something that's in chat. So Dan says, Priscilla raised a question that I'm also interested in. There's a difference between a business analysis general role and a business systems analyst. Can, um, can the panel comment? Who yeah, would like I would. Take I could that. take that one to start. I would say most of the time a BSA or business systems analyst role is going to have more of that technical component to it. It's going to have more of that systems, data, architecture, whatever may be knowledge. Whereas a general BA, a lot of times I think I saw in the Q and A, someone said, "Well, why don't I see as many generic BA roles anymore?" Honestly, a lot of people get promoted into those roles from business user roles. So they're business owners, they're business users within a company, they understand the products they're working on and the way the company works, and they become a business analyst. They kind of get into the career path that way. So that's why I see less generic BA roles and a lot more BSA or technical BA roles, because that's a candidate pool that employers need to go out there and find. Hmm. Maria, I didn't know if you wanted to add anything to that. Um, exactly the same. Um point what, what I'm seeing and um and just recently and I'm thinking recently a couple of years um uh, from a recruiting perspective at Unisuper what I've discovered I, I've had a role of generic BAs and generic BAs you know your strong business analysis even like what you mentioned understanding for being able to uh, you know, talk to the business, um, getting gaining their why, the, the the pain points, translating it into business requirements, your stakeholder requirements, um, as IBA, um, you know, Babok um, calls it out, and then 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 you kind of need to drill into the technical side. And when you come to the technical side, what I've discovered, some of those really uh, businesses BAs, and we we tried that formula, we tried to to put them on some of the projects. They could do those um, 
analysis, but to, to a degree from your that data analysis, but it's the technical part that, that you really need that technical knowledge to, to sit with the technical drawing, drawing out the technical understanding the solution, like what Stephen was saying, being in that solution, maybe even programmer level that, that you need that knowledge. Um, and that's where the difference is. We don't call them anymore business systems analysts, believe it or not, in Australia. We move to the technology there are technical analysts, so you won't see them advertise this business apparently that was the old term I don't know <laughs> but um yeah it's interesting yeah that and that's a good reminder that um there is not a standard set of job titles for business yeah. analysis professionals this is where recruiters and coaches can really help you to focus on your skill set and then what those jobs require regardless of what the title is called and how how you can make a match there um let's see I think we are we are just about at the end of our time together. I know we had lots of questions today, lots of people wanting to make can sure I, that they're going to get this recording. Yes, sir. Steven. Can I address one more quick topic just before we close? Because I saw it kind of consistently in the Q&A about <laughs> how do I address my weaknesses? How can I show I don't have something? And I think that's where you call it out on your resume or your cover letter. Maybe you're applying for a job and you match 70%, but you don't have the agile experience yet. But you decide, hey, I'm going to address that weakness by getting my Agile Analysis Certification from the IIBA. And you've got a set date to get that done in six months, and you put that on your resume. I was dealing with someone that was pursuing a hybrid PM Scrum Master role earlier today. And the person ended up getting an interview because they're getting another project management-based certification later this year. So that called out the weakness. Yes, I don't have it right now, but I'm going to get it. So always be thinking about that. You can address a weakness still in a positive manner on your resume, your cover letter, or during an interview. Yeah. And again, and why that having a plan uh, for your own development is so important so that you know exactly how you're going to do it and, and when you're going to do it. Well, thank you. Also, you answered that exactly on time. Good mm. job, Stephen. <laughs> All righty. We want to thank everybody, Stephen, Maria, and Tiffany. Thank you so much um, for your time and your expertise today. I can see all of the appreciation coming mm. through right now. Everybody is appreciating it. So um, reminder, you will get a link to the recording and we'll, we'll include the slide deck as well. Uh, you'll get that in 24 hours after today's session. So thank you guys for showing up. It's been another great webinar. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great day. Everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for having us. Yeah.